Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 7th of June 2011. 20 years ago today, Mount Pinatubo started to erupt. Speaking of eruptions, and contrary to all expectations, we are in the process of experiencing an M2 flare from the west limb of the sun. You certainly couldn't tell that we were due such an event from the sunspot regions. We have just five numbered sunspot regions, all in the western hemisphere of the sun, all relatively small and apparently inactive. 1228 and 1232 in the northern hemisphere seem to be continuing their decay. Regions 1226, 1231 and 1227 all seem to be relatively stable. It's interesting that there is not a single sunspot on the whole eastern hemisphere of the sun, though when you look at the X-ray movie to come, you'll see that uh, there is some evidence of a region coming over the northeast limb and possibly one coming over the southeast limb, but they both at the moment look rather weak and inactive. As it was yesterday, both the white light and magnetic movies are showing very little development in these active regions. So we can't look for the origin of our M flare in the new growth of active regions. So let's turn to the transition region and see if there have been any violent eruptions. For that we go to the AIA instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory and look at the 304 channel. And I think you're going to find it rather easy to identify where the eruption was. In the coronal movie you can see that the flare occurs in region 1226 but spreads but not only a long way south but all the way into the northern hemisphere. The extent of this flare is truly amazing even though the intensity is not all that great. Let's take another look at that full disc movie in 304 and then look at the western limb in detail. Did you notice near the end there that where some of the material splashed down back onto the surface of the sun there was a secondary brightening? Now the thing I find interesting about this detailed movie is that unlike the hypothesis we put forward about prominences erupting, them growing and becoming unstable and then lifting off, that this region is going to erupt. The flare just suddenly happens and a prominence lifts off. So now let's go take a look at the coronagraph data from the SOHO spacecraft. You can see that there's a massive coronal mass ejection off of the southwest limb. The important point here is after the event has started, within about half an hour, you see all these speckles on the images. But what are those? It turns out those are protons accelerated to um, near relativistic velocities in the explosion of the flare. And they take about 30, 40 minutes to reach the Earth from the flare site. These are one of the dangerous things for astronauts if they were beyond their magnetosphere or very high latitudes, as indeed the space station can be at times. Apart from the light and these solar energetic particles, the effects of these flares have not reached us yet and may never do so. The ACE data shows us that none of the effects have yet reached us in the solar wind. The density, temperature and speed of the wind are all falling, and the interplanetary magnetic field seems to have stabilised quite considerably compared with a couple of days ago. So we would therefore expect that the auroral arc is very quiet, which indeed it is, and that the KP index has also settled down, which it has, as it is only varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the sunspot number has dropped to 67, the X-ray background remains at B2 level. Radio Sun is at 103 solar flux units. The solar wind speed has dropped below 400 kilometers per second, with the slightly increased density of four protons per cubic centimeter, and the KP index is rated as quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is the same as before, with a continuing chance of C flares, chance of M and X flares relatively low. The sunspot number will remain low. CMEs are still very likely, and another geomagnetic storm is possible. In the longer term, there are no new regions due back for several days, and many of our brighter regions are going to be rotating off the west limb. So I imagine that solar activity will remain relatively low unless there is um, an emergence of new regions or some existing regions start to uh, grow very rapidly. For more details of what's going on in the sun, there are some links posted in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today, if you want to see earlier editions of the Sun Today, go to my channel and they are listed there, along with some of my videos on global warming, which I hope you'll enjoy. It's interesting often to go back one rotation or two rotations on the Sun and see what was happening when the same face of the Sun was towards the Earth. To go back exactly one rotation from now, you'd go back to the 10th of May video, and to go back two rotations, you'd go back to the 13th of April video. The links to those are both listed in the description box below. 
today's featured anthropogenic global warming video is called Follow the Money. It details how much is spent on anthropogenic global warming and who gets most of the money. You might be surprised. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.